board. Let's dye my hair with a beat. What is this video? Did I wash my hair at night and then go to sleep with it wet? Yes, I can now do that. Dearest gentle reader. I just finished Bridgerton. Completely not related to this video. What is related to this video? This vegetable. This thing. I do not like the taste of pizza. I find them way too sweet and I do not think that they belong in the vegetable category. They are weird. They belong very strictly in the ink department. Dye, you know, good strong pigment. Um, I have dyed my hair every color under the sun. I can say that confidently. I can also say I had a multitude of, of hair looks, hair ranges, hair everything. I feel like exhausted the hair world. The next plausible thing for me to get into is obviously the culinary world. That was satire. I know, but beets, although they do not taste good, that is an opinion of mine, they stain everything. When I saw them in my sister's fridge, because I do not buy beets, like what, what can I do with them? And I was like, what if I dye my hair with it? With this vegetable. So today I'm going to try to dye my hair pink or whatever color with beets. Feels weird, kind of like a potato, but um, softer kind of bit. Since I've never dyed my hair with beets, mm. since I've never dyed my hair with a vegetable, mm. since I've never dyed my hair with anything other that was strictly meant to go on the hair, I'm gonna have to perform a series of experiments on my beets to see what would be the most efficient way to extract the dye and then put it onto my hair. So, follow me. Let's go. Let's go. So here's what I have in mind with regards to creating a dye out of a vegetable. Decided on three that I wanted to try myself, try them on a strand of hair and see which one works best. First thing that I did is I grabbed my beet and I peeled and chopped it into little, little baby cubes and put them in a pot of hot water and I basically let it boil the dye straight out of it uh, for around 15 minutes. At the same time, I also decided to grab a second beet, cut it into wedges, pack them into foil and place them in the oven for the same amount of time. Once the boiled ones were ready, I got out all of the beets from them and I put them all into a blender. I realized it was getting a bit thick so I added back a bit of the juice, uh, the dye, back into it to create a very very luscious paste. On the internet I found that it is best to pass it through a cheesecloth to make sure there are no lumps. I did not own a cheesecloth, I did however own uh, wig caps. So I did that which was probably the most fun part of the entire process. The end result was a very very gorgeous looking creamy thing even though this entire the experiment did not smell gorgeous. Once I got that done, I got the foil beets, foil beets out of the oven, except guess what? They were still very, very hard, which I found weird. So I went in and I chopped it up again and then placed them back in the blender and created a very smoothy, sludgy-like thing. Both of those mixtures, I added a bit of coconut oil because the internet told me that you do need some form of an oil to actually make the dye kind of a cohesive, Thing. The final thing that I wanted to try was just to see what the ink dye on its own would do. The, basically the pigment that was extracted by boiling the beads in the first place, so I saved that. And like that, behold, I have created three unique beet dyes. Dye number one, or should I say beet juice. Beet dye number two, this is the strained option. Beet dye number three, this is the thickest slurry sludge looking mixture. This looks probably the most like dye, but it's also the most like Chunky. I need to see which one of the three actually works the best. Which one of these will be the most pigmented? A complete and utter disappointment. None of them are exceptionally pink. I had so much faith for this. And, and so far they are not giving. I think one of them is just a hair stronger and I think this is the one that was passed through the strainer. Tiniest bit of 
<laughs> pigment. And I'm not going to let that deflect my experimentation. I am hopeful. <laughs> Basically. I think I've decided I'm gonna be using this one to dye my hair today. Although, who knows, I might just mix both of them together to see if I can dye my hair with a vegetable. I have a call with a video call with this company in 45 minutes and I have yet to dye my hair. Yes, I will answer the call with dye on my hair. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on, I gotta film a TikTok. TikTok. I'm really trying to get into my TikTok. If you wanna follow me, I produce content there as well. It's good content, but I do produce it. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a bit of barrier cream. This is one by Framar. Not because I think I need it, but I've never dyed my hair with a bead before and I don't particularly feel like staining my skin, which I have a feeling it is. It looks so much better than it smells. I mix in a tiny bit of this. I don't care. I feel like there's pigment in here as well. This is the roast bead. Thing and I just, I'm gonna mix the two together. I feel like this on its own will not stick to my hair, so I feel compelled as a hair person to a tiny bit of conditioner. I have a feeling this is going to dilute the dye, but I need this to stick to the hair, and this is the only thing I can think of that is going to make it adhere to the actual hair. Clearly pigment. It's also dripping absolutely everywhere. <laughs> I dropped it on my pants. I guess that's that's something I have to be okay with. All right, let's dye my hair with a beat. All for barrier cream. According to <laughs> no. no, I'm wearing a cute bra. No, no. So make one heck of a thumbnail. It's running down my back. Oh my god, it's running down my back. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh my god. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I need to get this off. Oh my god. I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but I'm seeing a hint of pink. I'm seeing a hint of pink. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. What color is this? Why do I look anime? Why? Why is my hair sticking up? Give me a sec. An interesting color. Oh my. God, it's not like that that pink thing, but it's not red, but it's not purple. It's like silvery. To be fair, I did wash it with a purple shampoo just because I was like, what happens if? I'm impressed. I will say this much. It took me so long to get all the bits out of my hair. Looks similar. This vegetable has been weird from the start. Let's just say that much. First of all, I need to style my hair. I'm gonna go redo my makeup, style my hair, dry it, and then see what the finished color is. <laughs> I look like a cool boy. <laughs> I go do that and I'll be right back. Beetroot, a seemingly useless vegetable because it doesn't taste good, but it could be turned into hair dye. Pretty hair dye. <laughs> what? 
is this color? Not what I expected, I'll tell you that much. And the funny thing is, it's not even, it's a muted color. It's really gorgeously muted. It's definitely not the bright burgundy that it initially looked like. I suppose it kind of looks similar. Whatever, I think it looks insane. I like it, I like it so much. So yes, if you do have two to three beetroots, a chopping board, a knife, a pot of boiling water, a blender, a strainer, a wig cap, many, many hours to spare, and uh, strikingly light blonde hair, then yes, I would recommend you dye your hair with beetroot. Otherwise, no, it's a waste of time and there's much easier ways to get this exact color. But it was still a ridiculously fun process. Thank you, weird potato vegetable with a lot of pigment. Might just offer something to the hair world yet. If you enjoyed this video, as I know you do, did, do, did, do, 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 uh, give, it a, give it a like, because I like, I like them. If you enjoyed me, uh, subscribe to this channel. Join, join the Stellar fam. Mamma mia, che musabicciari. Che musar stellari. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go, and I will see you in my next video. To blue.